hello everybody welcome to the impressive channel there's been a lot of drama going on between the R&B divas and Candy Burris and Tamar Braxton got into it and I'm gonna break that down a little later on but first I kind of want to talk about the drama that's going on between Candy's group Escape and the group SWV now if you haven't been keeping up Escape and SWV have a reality show on Bravo called The Queens of R&B, and this show has been absolutely crazy. <laughs> There's been a lot of drama going on, particularly in the group Escape. I didn't get a chance to talk about it, but one of the singers, Latasha Scott, up and went solo without telling her group about it. And this is not the first time she has done that. She did that back in the 90s, and that was the reason why the group broke up the first time. And also there was tension within the group. That's another thing to note. There has always been some type of tension within Escape. Candy and Latasha in particular don't get along, but now Latasha is even beefing with her own sister, Tamika. And I didn't know how deep their feud was, but Tamika basically revealed that Latasha and her husband, Rocky, stole her royalty checks. And Tamika had no clue that she was getting royalties from Escape, but her sister and her husband were pocketing that money behind her back. So that was super, super foul. I never knew that. And also, Tamika pretty much implied that Latasha's husband is in fact dangerous. Because I don't know if y'all watched R&B Diva. It was a confrontation where on R&B Divas, he got into it with Nikki Gilbert's husband. And I was told, allegedly, <laughs> I took that for candy, that he pulled a gun out on her husband. And after that, it was no more R&B Diva. So, I mean, you know, he's known to be a bully. He's known to pull guns out. He pulled a gun out on this guy named Lawrence, this producer. And Lawrence was, he had to go to the hospital and he had a stroke. So, you know, my sister's husband, he's a bully. He's a bully. If y'all ain't figured that out by now, he's a bully. So I'm just trying to figure out what the consequences are, Rocky. What are those consequences? And you're not gonna threaten me like you threatened them. And you definitely not gonna pull a gun out on me like you did them. Cause guess what? My God don't play with. So as you can see, the issues between Tamika and Latasha and her husband are pretty deep and it's become a real problem. I do think Latasha's husband, Rocky, has played a role in separating Latasha from the group. And also Escape doesn't really want to work with the people that Latasha works with. I think they had a huge disagreement on management and this was a management company that Latasha and her husband are actually connected with, but the rest of the group didn't want to work with the managers because they weren't booking them like they were supposed to. So Candy in particular was like, we need to get new management. And so that's also been an issue. And we could talk about the issues going on in Escape all day long, but I want to move on. I want to talk about the drama between Escape and SWV. Now in the show, there were talks about Escape and SWV co-headlining a show together. And I believe this show was supposed to lead to them co-headlining a tour together, which would have been an amazing opportunity. Now SWV was all on board. They were like, yeah, let's do this. Let's make money together. But Escape was like, hold on. If we co-headline a tour, this means that we're going to have to split the money. Now, Escape is used to getting a certain amount of money per show. They've been able to negotiate for a higher payout and oftentimes they do headline their shows if they're able to because they make more money when they do. And they're not willing to compromise when it comes to the money. And that meeting they had was pretty awkward, especially when Escape was trying to explain their stance. SWV was offended, honestly, because they felt like Escape was placing themselves above them. They were like, dang, so y'all think you're too good to co-headline with us? What's the problem? So SWV was in their feelings about it, and rightfully so, I don't blame them. They're trying to let people know that they're not the little fish in this situation. Now the viewers of the show did have a lot to say about this because they also were siding with SWV, and Candy went on Twitter and said, we may not have been the headliners in the 90s, but we have been for the past six years since we reunited 
credit and respectfully, they've opened up for us multiple times already. Tiny from Escape said, to be clear, we love SWV as much as you all do, but business is business. I ain't never been a hater, but I've always been about business. And Candy also went on her YouTube channel and she went into more detail about it and she just kind of made it clear that Escape is the bigger touring act today than SWV is. But just because you've sold more records than us back in the 90s does not mean you can sell more tickets to shows than we can right now during this time. Now the ladies in SWV had words of their own. Lily said, shred lightly. And she also posted receipts of the people who listen to them outside of the US. So SWV is also a global act. They not only do shows in the US, but they do shows internationally. Also, Coco chimed in and she posted SWV's numbers in comparison to Escape numbers. And listen, the numbers don't lie. SWV definitely have more sales, more hits, and more streams than Escape does. So SWV feels like there's no reason why they can't co-headline a tour with Escape. Coco also reposted this post from Billionaire and he said Escape three out of four had a show in November and was not the headliner. Monica was the headliner and BBD was on before her. They don't always headline. Not sure why Escape can't co-headline with SWV. Create an entertaining show for the fans with all original members. Why do the television show if there was never a desire to have equal billing for a tour? And Escape and Taj from SWV also went live with each other and they kind of revealed that this whole touring issue with Escape really left a bad taste in their mouth. But the thing is, when we got the call, were we yeah, told we, it's an it was a collaborative tour. effort? It was going to be a cold headliner situation, yeah. and then we get there, it was just totally changed, yeah. and I couldn't go home because we had already signed the contract. <laughs> and it just changed the whole dynamic of the whole groove. It just like, dang, this everything. is dumb. <laughs> It sucks though, cause we were really cool, and now it's just like, Ugh. yeah. And now it just feels different. Everything feels different. All the clips, and you know, people are taking yeah. advantage of the clips here and clips there. And of course, you're gonna feel some type of right. way when you see clips and somebody's still saying something smart about you. We was ready to just make history yeah. because it's never been done before. So to get there, and it's somebody put us down done. because they have millions of followers on social media. I was just like, wow, that's weird. We living in, in a tiny little spare apartment, working every day on the road, not seeing our family to, to be told that we're not good enough to stand up. So as you can see, SWV is very offended and they filmed this reality show with Escape because they thought that they would be able to do a tour together. I think that was the plan from the beginning, but Escape doesn't want to co-headline a tour with SWV. A part of it is because of ego, but it's mostly about money. Escape is used to making a certain amount of money. And if they co-headline a tour with SWV, that means they have to split the check equally with them as well, which means that they probably will be getting less money than what they would make if they were actually the headliners. So this whole thing is about money. And also another thing, Escape has become a headlining act in their later years because they're able to draw in bigger crowds. They've gotten a lot of exposure from reality TV, especially Candy and Tiny. Candy has been a part of the Real Housewives of Atlanta franchise for over a decade. Tiny has had her reality shows, so they've been in the public eye and they've been relevant and they can demand to be headliners and they can demand more money per show because of their relevancy. Their popularity is the reason why Escape has been able to have a resurgence and they actually can bring in big crowds. So I understand where Escape is coming from and I don't think they meant to disrespect SWV, but the way they explained it was a little off-putting to SWV. And it comes across as if they feel like they're too good to co-headline with SWV, which is why it was such a turnoff, not only to SWV, but the viewers as well. And mind you, if they co-headline a tour together, they still will be making a lot of money. They all will be taking home a big bag. So money should not really be the issue here, but 
Escape does their business differently and they require a higher payout and they're not trying to compromise on that. Hopefully they reconsider and make something happen in the future because I would like to see Escape and SWV on tour together. Now, before I get into the whole Candy and Tamar feud, I wanna first thank Sonic Bonnet for sponsoring this video. The Sonic Bonnet is not your everyday bonnet. It's a luxuriously silky bonnet with the power of Bluetooth technology. Built into its breathable elastic headband are a set of Bluetooth earphones, so you could start, pause, and play sounds from your phone, answer calls, and more, all with a tap of a button. The Sonic Bonnet is the perfect companion for your daily self-care and hair care routine. Once you tuck your hair into its comfortable, silky head cap, you'll be sold. Indulge yourself in this nightly beauty regimen and sleep soundly and sweetly with your favorite sleep sounds, music, podcasts, and audiobooks. And guess what? You'll never have to worry about losing your earbuds. The Sonic Bonnet earphones are USB chargeable with over a three nights charge and are easily removed and replaced for when you wanna wash your bonnet. This self-care is for the mind, body, and hair. Treat yourself to a Sonic Bonnet today at sonicbonnet.com. And while you're at it, grab a gift for a friend or a loved one. I honestly can't think of a cuter gift. Take advantage of the free US shipping on all orders over $50 now at sonicbonnet.com. Once again, I wanna thank Sonic Bonnet for partnering with me and sponsoring this video. Now, lastly, let's get into this drama between Candy and Tamar Braxton. Now, some months ago, Tamar hinted that Candy and her husband Todd threatened her backstage at one of the concerts they did together, but Tamar never mentioned who the name was. But on Watch What Happens Live, she did confirm that it was Candy and her husband who threatened her. Now, this was surprising to me because I actually thought Tamar and Candy made amends on Celebrity Big Brother. If you don't know, this isn't the first time that Candy and Tamar fell out. In fact, years ago, Tamar and Candy's group Escape were on tour together, and Tamar was trying to bring Kaya and T.S. Madison out during her set. Now, around this time, Kaya and T.S. Madison had a viral show called Queen's Court, and they were roasting celebrities, and they roasted Escape on one of their shows. But we gonna congratulate you for singing baritone on Broadway. What's she singing? Baritone. Every man wants a Wait a minute, what it is? Every man wants a Every man wants a woman. Okay. Where can I go? Every man wants a woman. Now, when Tamar invited Kaya and T.S. Madison to the show, Candy was furious. It was a whole thing. It was a big mess. But Candy and Tamar did make amends on Celebrity Big Brother. However, they fell out once again. And why did they fall out? Well, Candy was upset when she heard Tamar take up for Carlos King. Carlos King is a producer and he was trying to do an unauthorized biopic on Escape. And Candy was really, really, really upset when she found out that he was doing this behind her back. But Tamar spoke her two cents on it on Dish Nation and she tried to be neutral, but it sounded like she was siding a little more with Carlos. Story. Which is why I don't agree with her calling him a thief. Mm -hmm. So you don't really don't want nobody telling your own story. Right. But at the end of the day, I just feel like there are all the time unauthorized, like, you yeah. know, versions of people's lives. And this is just a part of being an entertainer. Yeah. I don't know. I want to hear from Carlos because I want to know the king. Now, Candy and Todd got wind of Tamar's comments. And I think this is what caused their confrontation backstage. And the way Tamar explained it, they basically pressed her and we all have a concert together. And I'm leaving my dressing room to go to my dancer's dressing room to bring them their new clothes, and I see Candy in the hallway. And I'm like, hey, boo, and I give her a hug, you know, whatever, and she just look at me and she's like, I ain't fucking with you. And I'm like, what, what? I'm thinking she's kidding. <laughs> like, I'm for real thinking she's kidding. And she's like, I ain't fucking with you. I'm like, what, what happened? She like, oh, well, you said that shit you said what about Carlos King was foul and I'm like oh shit I, I, and I honestly truly forgot about it right and I'm like listen I didn't mean no harm you know I, I wasn't trying to you know go against you or nothing like that you know I wasn't coming for you it's nothing like that I really truly humbly apologize and plus I sent her a DM and I said um this was a while ago and I'm I was just trying to let you know that, you know, I wasn't trying to be, you know, malicious or nothing like that. Nah, nah, nah. But you said, and you did, and did, and did, 
and then you double down and put it in your story. I said, listen, Kenny, I'm not trying to go there with you. You know, we in the middle of this hallway. And now, now by this time, people swarming around. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, this is, we ladies, we shouldn't be doing this. We can go in my dressing room. Yeah, 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 before I take it to the next level. Now, and I'm like, well, take, what's the name of the level you want to take it to? Like, what you want to fight? Yeah, I mean, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, you said, you said, he did, he did steal from us. <laughs> right? And I'm like, she is really serious right now. <laughs> and now I am trying to completely de-escalate the situation. It's giving bobs and <laughs> cackling and cacklings. And like, then Tadina comes up and like, he comes and get her. And he says something to her. And then he looks at me in my face. Y'all can believe this shit or not. Nigga look at me in my face and go, you know what it is. Oh. <laughs> what? But when it comes to dudes in another woman's face to physically threaten them and harm them, that's when the line is drawn. But it's no reason for a man to ever step to a woman. Period. And the fact is, that is what happened. I said what I said. You know, the reason why we had beef in the first place because that was mean as to me on tour. I'm very, very similar to how y'all see this SWV stuff panning out. My story. Now, Candy said that Tamar was lying. She said Todd did not threaten Tamar. You know, simply that that's not true. My husband never said nothing to her. He did not threaten her or none of that. So that's why I was like, I don't even want to like address that on Amazon Live. Um, she and I did have words, but <laughs> he did. So that's why I was like, mm, yeah. <laughs> Some people like to twist things a little bit, but we can talk about it later on a different platform or not. Candy also posted this shady meme of Wednesday Adams, and she basically was implying that Tamar is a perpetual victim. Now, one of you will be the drowning victim. I'll be the victim. All your life. Help me! I'm drowning! I can't swim. Now, Tamar was upset when she saw Candy post this, and she had a lot to say. She was going in on Candy. She first posted this on Instagram and said, I'm done talking about it. Obviously, it happened. Candy wants to deflect and condone her man's behavior by calling me a victim. Shake my head. It's abusive and disrespectful, and it's never okay for a man to step to a woman. Fans don't have to agree, period. Everyone have a nice day. God is so good. Watch Queen's Court and stream my new song, Change. P.S. I spy with my little eye the truth. So in this picture, you could see Tamar's fiance, Jeremy, actually speaking with Todd. And Jeremy did confirm that he had a little talk with Todd after that whole confrontation. Tamar also threw shade at Candy under the Shade Room's comments. And this was under the video where Candy was talking about how Escape gets paid more than SWV. She said, imagine having the biggest ego for the most non-singing person in the entire music industry. Stream my new hit song, Change, where I pay homage to the amazing SWV. And she also went on a Twitter rant and said, listen, I'm healed and I'm saved, but God don't want us to be rollover rovers. I'm standing firm on what I said, exactly how it happened, and don't need to lie about anything. Now Billy Goat is going to start. Be back up again calling me a liar. Someone needs to call Call her and tell her to chill. Tadina, 1,000 million whatever percent, did what I said he did. Whew. So Tamar did end up deleting this tweet, but it was still very, very, very shady. She was going in on Candy. Candy's cousin, Akbar V, even stepped in and she said, I've been chilling, but y'all about to stop playing with my cousin. And that's just that. We forgot she's the most paid also. And Tamar responded under the Neighborhood Talks comments and she said, yeah, cause we all got a cute coin. And in my situation, my man has his own without my name or businesses. So she was taking a shot at Todd when she said that because apparently she feels like Todd makes his money off of Candy's back. So there was just a lot going on. 
Was the whole thing necessary? No, it wasn't. I think Tamar was definitely dragging it. But at the same time, I believe Tamar was telling the truth. I could actually see Candy being upset with Tamar for siding with Carlos because if you don't know, Candy was really, really emotional when she found out that Carlos was trying to do an unauthorized movie on her group escape. She was very emotional about it. So I could imagine when she heard Tamar's take on the situation, she was a little triggered by it. And the thing is she and Tamar already had a rocky history before. So that adds another layer of resentment. And I think Candy's at a point where she doesn't wanna hear what Tamar has to say because she feels like she is shady and she is the perpetual victim. But if what Tamar said about Candy and Todd is true, they were definitely wrong for how they behaved towards her. And they need to take some accountability. For them to get an attitude with her and step to her and say, I don't F with you all because she had an opinion where she didn't disrespect anybody, it's just ridiculous to me. However, I don't like the way Tamar handled the situation after the fact. She was being a bit dramatic and I think her throwing shade at Candy's voice was unnecessary. Candy can actually sing. I've seen Escape live and she sounds good live. So calling her Billy Goat and all of that is unnecessary. I think it was kind of mean spirited and I don't think Tamar needs to revert back to that space. Tamar has grown a lot and I want her to continue on that positive path. I don't want her to go back to that petty, shady Tamar. Anyway, tell me what you all think about this video down below. Please like, comment, and subscribe and share this video if you care. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.